In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, gracious and merciful to me, O oh, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read together Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend me my, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do you go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, my, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, 
O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant us a steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, a cheerful hope in your mercy, and a sincere love for you and one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, really quickly, who can uh, tell me what all of this means? Service, <laughs> like, um, what's the word? Preparation. Just try it again, that's fine. Preparation? Yeah, preparation, right, yeah. The preparation of the service is the very forgiveness of sins. That's pretty good preparation. Um, and it allows us to enter into the church, into, enter into the uh, divine service with sins forgiven. Now, what's next? Because here, remember what I said. In the confession, how many times is the gospel mentioned? Or excuse me, the baptism mentioned? mentioned? Four times baptism is mentioned. Um, and then we go into the intro. It. Anybody want to tell me what the intro it is? It is the beginning of the divine service. Let, let, let's put let's tack divine on there, okay? Uh, just be, because divi he, the divine is the one who serves us. Christ serves us, not we serve Him um, in the divine service. Uh, and how do you? What is the intro it known for in English? What does it sound like? I'll put it that way. Entering. Yeah, entering or entrance. Yeah, exactly. So the entrance. That's where the pastor enters into the chancel. Does everybody remember what the chancel is? We don't have one here. It's where the altar sits, right? And and the wooden part around it. Okay. Then. It grows up even more to the Lord have mercy. Yes, the, who, who's the, who? You said Kyrie? Yeah. Ten points. You start doing houses. <laughs> no, these points don't actually mean anything. <laughs> they're, they're just given away. <laughs> um. But that's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, Kyrie eliaison. What does Kyrie eliaison mean? Technically yes, but I mean, well, technically no, but technically yes. Uh, which can't either be a technicality. But uh, Kyrie eliaison means Lord have mercy, right? But the entire Kyrie eliaison is what you said. Right. Okay. So then we climb up a bit higher, and we we we, have, we are repentant of our sins, and we have asked for forgiveness. And then we go and we uh, get to the Gloria, and in the Gloria, it, it, you you can just see it start to build up, 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 right. Um, and in the Gloria, we re recognize what what Christ has done for us. To, for, to, to grant us mercy. We have Luke 2. Remember this? Remembering the incarnation. What does incarnation mean? Literally? Take on flesh. I, perfect. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Um, when Christ takes on flesh and when we communicate uh, 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 with, with Christ and, and therefore with the Trinity uh, in the Gloria. Glory be to the Father. 
uh, excuse me, glory to God in the highest. That's the excelsius, right? Glory to God in the highest. And so the per first major proclamation is Christ is born. Or Christ is conceived, really. Because what, what, what did the angel say when, when, uh, when Gabriel came to Mary? Blessed are you. And it was done. Christ had taken on flesh. Um, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And, the, and, through, those, and the, through that spoken word, uh, Christ was made incarnate. And not, that's not unlike creation when God spoke and the world became. Right? That was what was created. Christ, of course, was not created but begotten. Okay. Now, we go up a little bit more, and this is what we're gonna, where we're going to start today. <laughs> Start-ish today. Um, what's this little one here for? The readings. Okay. I'm going to put the Old Testament and the epistle here uh, along with the first reading. Why? You want to know? Because it's not always, we don't always have the Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading can, can be uh, replaced with uh, any text that isn't the Gospel. But usually it's from Revelation and it's towards the end, where we're coming now. In this uh, green section here, uh, where, we're, where we're heading, we're heading towards the ministry and then uh, towards uh, the, uh, the uh, John's Revelation. Now, okay, so there's a little one. Now, what's the big one? Right, or a little bigger one, right here. Now, should we make a big deal about the gospel? Okay. Where does pastor read the gospel from? In the chancel, by the altar. You will write on both accounts. We talked about this a long time ago, but I doubt you, I doubt you remember. Remember me talking about horns? Yeah, the horns of the altar. And it's representary of what? Does anybody remember? The Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, exactly. And so I stand on this part of, of, the, of the horn of the altar and read the gospel. Now, there, that's not to say that's the only way to do it. Um, in fact, I would prefer uh, that we have a processional. Now, we actually process out in the midst of the people and process there with the with the crucifix uh, and the elder holding the the Bible and reading it there. Would anyone like to guess why that's a better practice? I remember at our old church, I think it's something about you bring the word into the midst of the people and you see bring it out into the congregation in the midst of the people. I think that's something like that Paul was said. Yeah, yes, 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 and, and uh, yeah, absolutely, that is correct. To bring the gospel into the midst of the people, but to, to be more correct or more pointed, um, Christ came in flesh to dwell amongst us, so we bring the gospel that is Jesus Christ to dwell amongst the people. So what you said is, 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 is absolutely right. So that's why I like a gospel procession. What is the number one reason that churches don't do a gospel procession? And I'm, t and I'm teaching you this as little ones so that when you grow up, you don't give your pastor a hassle. <laughs> Why? What's the number one reason that, that churches don't do a, procession, a gospel processional? And that is where you come and take the cross, quite literally, and the Bible, and you go down into the midst of the people, they'll turn this way, and the, and the preacher, the pastor will, will read from here, 
and then we'll process back. That's it. That's the reason. It takes too long. It, well, well, I, well. The, the thing about it is, it really, it, 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 it does. But it should, it shouldn't be. Well, it does. It should be. It does. You know that. That's the problem. You know, it, it, that extra, that extra time should be uh, joyful, exciting, and that's what you guys need to take with you. Is that this stuff is wonderful. It's not what you have to do. It's what you get to do, and what gets done to you. You get to go to church. And what gets done to you is the forgiveness of sins. And then, from the gospel and the epistle, we'll put it in a big bubble. Uh, anybody want to guess? I've sort of kind of ruined it, but... Uh, hmm? It's very good. Yes, it does. You already wrote. Why does that not look right to me? I don't know what. Do you ever do that when you write something and you look at it and you're like, oh. Mm. Oh, that's schooling. And so, and so basically, basically what, the, what the sermon is, is a proclamation of the readings. Now, what elements should a sermon have? By the way, this is the first point, this is the first pinnacle. Uh, give me a give me a better, uh, more kid friendly word. Peak. This is the first peak. And when, when I say peak, does anyone know what I mean? And is that the right peak? Peak valley, peak valley, peak valley. Okay. So this is the very first peak. We've been we've been seeing it right rise like this. And here we are at the first large peak, and it is the sermon. Why? Because the pastor is proclaiming all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this, and all of this. Literally, that's what that's what he does. Whether you whether you see the little intricacies or or not, um, that's literally what's what's happening, uh, and so the sermon is the first is the first pinnacle. Uh, excuse me, the first peak uh, of the divine service. Okay, um, the next part we're going to go to. Oh, what did. I wish this silence wasn't so long. I, yes, I did miss. I knew I, I knew I missed something. The creed. The creed, as well as the collect. What what are the uh, what is the creed? What is a creed? Or in Latin, credo. And here's a hint for you, uh, uh, Latin enthusiasts. I'm sure you all are. O means I. What does What does credo mean? Or creed? It's for, yes, first two words of the creed. All right, so if this is O, and this means believe, I believe in. And also, while we're on the subject, and I, I hate that I, I hate that I missed that in my in my prepping, but um, every church has a creed. Every church. Okay, 
if you walk into a non-denominational church, which is a, which is totally a denomination, um, and you and you ask them, and they say, "Well, we we believe in deeds and not creeds, or good works over statements of faith." They'll they'll either point you to their mission statement, which is totally a creed, or you can ask them, "Well, what do you believe?" And they'll say, "Well, I believe this, 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 this." I say, "Well, okay." then you're a creedal church. The question is, are you an apostolic creedal church? That's the difference. What do I mean when I say apostolic creedal church? Yeah, think about what that, what that word might mean. Like a church that believes in God in the right way? You're not wrong. But what, did, what was Christ's inner circle called? Apostles. Apostolic means the teachings of the apostles. Yeah, well, it's, it's one of those. It's one of those words that that are, are easily uh, entered and, and left. But yeah, so so the apostolic to be an apostolic creedal church it means that we confess what the what the apostles believed and taught and confessed. And that includes the Council of Nicaea and the Athanasian Creed. What? Apostolic? Nah, probably. But but I mean you've heard of the Apostles' Creed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have that. We have the Apostles' Creed, we have the Nicene Creed, we have the Athanasian Creed. Does anybody know what the Athanasian Creed is? It, yeah, it's the one that make it's the one that makes you kids complain and make us as adults go, yes, it's it's Holy Trinity Sunday. We get to do the. An Australian pastor is teaching that Jesus that Jesus wasn't God. An Australian one. That. And I don't mean this to pick on you. Might have been the best sentence I've ever heard in my life. Um, Arian, yeah, Arius is, is his name. So I can see your confusion, but that was awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, uh, you, 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 put, you put words together. It's, a, it's an attempt at growing in your vocabulary. It's an opportunity, not a mistake. Um, so, so we are apostolically, apostolic creedal church, Augustana is. Um, and how do we know this? Through the Book of Concord, the Confessions, in particular the Augsburg Confession and the Large Catechism and the Small Catechism. Let's stick, but for the moment, let's, let's, go, let's start small and go big. The Small Catechism, right? What does it, what, it has six parts. What are the parts? I'll tell you what, you've been singing like seven of them. Okay, T Ten Commandments. Um, and you have to do them in order. I'm not, I don't. The Apostles' Creed. Lord's, Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer. Um, Sacrament of Baptism. This is the one that every Lutheran has a problem with, not just in, remem in remembering, but uh, execution. Office of the Keys, Confession, and so and so when 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 we see that this book this, that this is each one of you will pledge or have pledged uh, that you would rather uh, die than fall away from the confession of of your faith, right? 
And what is your faith? Your faith is explained in the book of Concord. Why? All, isn't, all, isn't all that we need the Bible? And the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, but you can also put together a jigsaw puzzle without the top. Right? But it's a lot easier when you have the box top. Have you ever put, put together a puzzle? I always start with the four corners, and then I try to do the edge piece, like the edge. Edge, yeah. Okay, okay. The corner pieces would be the Augsburg Confession, and 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 then and then the side pieces would be the large and small catechism, and then you would start filling it in with the formula of Concord, the prime and primacy of the Pope, epitome. Uh, the formula, of con well, no, I already said that one. Uh, apology of the Augsburg Confession, and then you got this big, beautiful picture of uh, law and gospel and forgiveness for you, and oh, take and eat, take and drink. So you need to make, make a puzzle like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I think that I think that would be a brilliant idea. That would be really neat. Bruce Kent's, I, I, I copyrighted that. <laughs> or uh, what is it? Uh, C circle. Pasteurized and crystal. Um, I think let, let's stop here because I, I want to get back. In, I want to stay stick in that creed uh, for next time. So let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen.